Hi folks, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Payal and I am a traveler who also loves to meet people. And I think a blend of both is where this concept of melting pot has come about. In my melting pot series, I will be talking to lots of inspiring people from different parts of the world and also from different cultures whom I meet during all my travels. The common factor between these folks will be the desire to follow their passion and make it a way of life. So step into this melting pot and enjoy the chats. Hi listeners, it's me again, uh, Payal on the melting pot and this time my guest is a very, very interesting gentleman who has quite um, a history and I'm so, so, I mean, I've heard a bit of it uh, when I uh, met him earlier and I'm really, really um, looking forward to bringing it to all of you, my, my listeners. So I'd like to introduce Bruce Matthew. Uh, we're here in Singapore and uh, Bruce is half Singaporean, half French. Uh, but he's born and brought up in Singapore, and he has quite an interesting journey, which I'd like him to share with us. Um, I know he said that he would probably, you know, once he starts, and some of his conversations have gone on for four hours, but we're going to try and cap it, um, and I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this chat. So, hi, Bruce. Hi, hi. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I'm really um, looking forward to it. Thank you for waking up at the crack of dawn uh, to come to talk to me. And um, so like I do with all my guests, um, I'm always very curious and intrigued with uh, their journey um, and how they got to where they are today. So um, I'd like you to share this with my listeners and me. Sure. So I'll start off with 1,000. 372 days. Okay. I, I know this would mean nothing to you or your listeners. Yeah. But to me, it is significant. Okay. Because it has been 1,372 days since I became a free man. So when you say free man, what, what do you mean? Uh, I was released from prison uh -huh. on the 7th of March, 2016. Okay. After serving a sentence of five years and nine months for drug consumption. So in total, I've been in prison five times wow. with a combined sentence of approximately 20 years. Okay. And I have also been given 21 strokes of the cane. Wow. Which just to, um, you know, just to let the listeners from across the world know that that is a form of punishment in Singapore. Yes, it for, is. For offen offenders, right? Yes, for, yeah. uh, for drug offenders and offenders who, for violent offenses. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um... In total, I've been in prison five times, like I said. Mm -hmm. And um, each time when I go to prison, I would always tell myself that this will be my last. Right. But time and again, after my release, I would go back to my old ways and get into trouble with the law again. Right. The first time I tried drugs mm -hmm. was when I was 13, one, three. Wow. And guess what? You liked it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. And because I loved that high, yeah. that was the beginning of my tumultuous affair with her that spanned three decades. Wow. So, I, I think you would know that drugs can do strange things to a person. Yeah. So, drugs had made me lie, mm -hmm. steal, mm -hmm. rob, mm -hmm. and cheat in order to support my habit. Mm -hmm. And drugs had also turned me into a violent man. Mm -hmm. In my chemically altered state of mind, I fought many times. Mm -hmm. I've assaulted a police officer. Mm -hmm. And I have even stabbed someone. And once, while I was in police custody, mm -hmm. I'd also attempted to escape by jumping out of a third floor window. So during my last incarceration, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about my life, yeah. the things I did, and as to why I keep on reoffending. And after many months of rumination and sincere soul searching, I finally found the answer. And it was, it was quite simple, actually. I have been going in and out of prison mm -hmm. simply because I forget. So what do you mean by that? After my release, mm -hmm. amidst the lights and glitters and many distractions of this world, yeah. I forget 
about mm. the pain and suffering that I had to go through when I was in prison. Yeah. And I forget yeah. about the unnecessary misery my family had to endure because of me. Yeah. And I forget about yeah. the promises I made to myself, yeah. to my family, and even to God. Yeah. You know, I was just like a man looking in a mirror, mm -hmm. and as soon as I walked away, mm -hmm. I forget what I look like. Mm. Um, I have a daughter who, who is 10 years old this year, okay. and she's my only child, yeah. and she is the absolute love of my life. When I was in prison, my mm -hmm. wife would bring her to visit me once every month. Right, right. So there was this particular day that she came, mm -hmm. that day was very special. And why is that? Uh, yeah, that day was special because her birthday. She had turned four on that day. Okay. okay. So my wife had bought her brand new dress. Mm -hmm. And you know how little children are, you know. They yeah. get excited. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So she was so proud of her dress that when she stepped into the cubicle to visit, she mm -hmm. started to parade herself. Mm -hmm. And then when she sat down, I sang her birthday song. Mm -hmm. So all of us were singing and clapping, and we were all so happy. Right. And then at the end of the song, yeah. my daughter looked at me, yeah. and she said, Dada, carry. Right. I tell you. When I heard that, my heart absolutely dropped. So was that the turning point? So what happened was she, she looked at me, you know, strangely, and she said, Dada, carry. Hmm. I mean, what can I do? I was in prison. There was a glass in front of me. But did she know that she was coming to, I mean, at the age of four, that she was actually coming into prison? Did she even understand? I, I don't think at that young age she could fathom what... Com what comprehend, yeah, comprehend yeah. what, what But I what, guess she yeah. must have figured, why is it that... You're not at home with her, and mm -hmm. you know you, your your wife or her mom has to bring her somewhere mm -hmm. to meet you, right? Mm -hmm. So she must have been confused. Um, I mean, do you talk to her about it now? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I, I guess not when she was four, yeah. but um, I recall that when she was about five and a half, yeah. she didn't ask my wife. You know, why is why is Dada in prison and all yeah, that, and my yeah. wife tried her best to explain to her. Hmm. But when I came out, hmm. one of the first things I did was to talk to her about this. Right, yeah. right. Because I, I felt that it would be wise of me as a father yeah. to let her know now, yeah. then to allow her to discover it on her own self, I don't know, 10, 20 years down the road. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. I feel, would be detrimental to our relationship. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's so what I did. So how did you explain it to her? So I told her that... Because you couldn't... Did you tell her that you actually enjoyed um, drugs and that's what led you to violence and stealing and cheating and all of that? I mean, is that... What, what was your approach? Okay, so what I did was when I came out, mm -hmm. she was uh, close to seven. Okay. So I, I explained to her that I was in prison okay. Okay, because of unlawful things that I did. Right. And I explained to her that we live in a uh, in a society where it's very strict, yeah. you know, like yeah. Singapore. Yeah. 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 So I said, um, if you do something wrong, hmm. you would have to uh, you have to pay They're the price. The exactly. Yeah. 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 And not only that, I brought her to a few of my sharings as much as possible, and she has, she has heard me share it many times. So I guess yeah. She, so when she, you say a few of your sharings, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Um. I have been out close to four years. Okay, yeah. So after my release, I have done a lot of volunteer work. Okay. Because I, I felt this calling in my heart mm -hmm. um, to bring hope right. to people who have been in prison. Because I, I've been in prison for so long and I've seen the amount of hopelessness that's inside. I yeah. tell you, it's scary. Mm -hmm. I, this, um, there's this one instance yeah. when I was serving my last sentence. Yeah. I was at the front first three months of my sentence. Yeah. My cellmate, yeah. okay, who was serving five years. Yeah. Uh, he was also in his first three months. You know what he told me? He said, Bruce, I'm prepared to come back for LT2. LT2 meaning this that? sentence would be a minimum seven years. He was serving LT1 like me, long-term drug sentence. Oh, okay, okay. So LT1 minimum five years. Yeah. If you, go, if you come out, and you commit the same offence again, you yeah. get LT2. 
right. which carries a minimum of seven years. So why did he say he was prepared to do that? Because he wanted to come out and then, no. and then what? I, I, this is what I believe. Yeah. Right? Singapore is a meritocratic society. Right. So everything is based on merit. Right. If you have it, all right, you have good grades in school, you know, you come from a good home, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, you, you have sort of like got it made in life. Right. But when you come from a totally different background, yeah. um, low education, like zero skills, yeah. and then plus you have a criminal record yeah. to boot, yeah. I guess they know that, you know, um, it would be very difficult for them out in society. So for this gentleman's case, I, I think that was what happened. Mm. He told himself, you know, he's a goner. Mm. He's never going to make it in life. And he sort of like just gave up. Mm. Yeah. So what, what he does is, he does what he likes, what he feels comfortable with. And drugs, right. I, I guess, is his, um, is his escape route, mm. so, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But it wasn't your escape route. You actually wanted it. So, yeah. you know, that's the difference. For me, it was I, I really enjoyed drugs. Mm. Or I enjoyed the high that it mm. gave me. Mm. Um, the strange thing about people who are addicted to drugs mm -hmm. is that their life is so centered around drugs mm. that in whatever situation that they are in, whatever emotions or mood that they, they are in, yeah. it always be drugs. So, for example... I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'll take drugs to, to elevate that mood. Mm. I'm happy, I want to party, I'll take drugs. So mm. everything is about drugs, drugs and drugs. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so moving on. Yes. Um, once you got released from prison and you had this turning point in your life because of your daughter, mm. what was it that, you know, you, you, you did mention that then you wanted to give back and you wanted to talk you know, of your journey and your experiences so that people could um, somewhere, you know, uh, maybe have a takeaway from that. So um, how did you go about that? So what happened was, for the last three months of my incarceration, I was placed on a community-based program at Teen Challenge Singapore, okay. which is a halfway house. Okay. So it was during that period that I had developed a burden for those who had been in my shoes. Right. So much so that shortly after I completed my sentence, I joined them as a care worker. Okay. And it was also during this my stay at Teen Challenge yeah. that I was asked to share my life story mm -hmm. right, to, to an audience for the very first time. Right. Of course, I was a bit mm, apprehensive and nervous yeah. because yeah. I... I I don't know how the reception would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was to an audience of, I remember, it was like a book launch, actually. Okay, okay. I shared to an audience of about, about 200. Wow, yeah. Mm. yeah. And, you know, people were very receptive. Hmm. Not only that, after my sharing, a lot of people came up to me to speak, to ask me more questions, and there were a few who even invited me to share my story at their organization. Yeah, and I guess that was that was the starting point of everything. Right, right. Yeah, and um, after that, I also um, partnered up with the Central Narcotics Bureau. Okay. Which I still am an active volunteer okay. until today. So what I do with them is I do preventive drug education with them in schools. Oh. I am a prison volunteer. Yeah. I volunteer my services to the Singapore Boys Home. Right. And East Coast. East Coast is, an, is a VWO aftercare association okay. that helps people who are just released from prison to get jobs, you know, and yeah, housing yeah, and such. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, you're also involved with a church? I am. Okay, and what is it that, so, so what is it that you do uh, for the church or with the church? Um, I guess when we come out, okay, no man is an island. We always believe that, or drugs, drug addicts always believe that I can do it alone. I can face this journey alone. If mm. I want to quit drugs, you know, all I need to do is stop. Right. And that is absolute fallacy. Mm. Okay, I've tried it. I've tried to quit drugs on my own many times. Mm. And I feel each and every time. Mm. Okay. I've come to the um, realization that we need support. You're listening to a fusion of stories recounted for the first time ever by some fascinating people from across the globe with me, Pyle, on this very unique and special podcast series, Melting Pot. 
two great pillars of support for any addicts would be one, family, mm -hmm. two, faith. Mm. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. for myself, my church, it's very important. It's a pillar of support for me. I peep, I've like-minded people inside there right. in my church who, would, uh, who have shared this journey with me, who have been in prison many times also. Yeah. Uh, people who are who have never been in prison, but who are very supportive of, of um, the plight that we're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. with this community around <coughs> us, yeah. or around me, so to speak, um, I can be rest assured that um, no judgment will be passed on me. That whatever situations I, I face, mm -hmm. I have people down there to help me out. So you felt that after you kind of reformed, mm -hmm. um, you were accepted back? into the community um, or was there resistance did people look at you differently um, you know you had family mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. but what about the people around society you? society yeah in our journey yeah. there will always be people who are not accepting of us of our past right okay right. and I tell you one thing I do not blame them mm -hmm. okay. I first have to look at myself and my yeah. track record yeah okay yeah. Uh, it's not pristine, it's very blemished. Mm. But I do not cry over that. I, I'm at an age where, you know, say lovey, right? If this person don't accept me, I move on and move on and move on. Right. And I tell you, along the way, there will be, there will be people who are accepting of you and your past. Mm. Right? Mm. And it is people like this that, um, that I will stay with. Yeah. And people like this who I can call friend and, and build a new life. Yeah. So I guess people who, you know, um, despite your life's journey, uh, were still with you. Mm -hmm. I think they're the people who really matter, yes. right? Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. So a little bit about the social enterprise that mm -hmm. you're involved in mm -hmm. now. Um, how did it start? And what is um, the goal? Um, and, you know, have you seen, you know, I'm not going to say more because I want you to talk about the social enterprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm familiar with, um, because you've mentioned it to me in the past, of um, what the social enterprise is, mm -hmm. but um, I'd like you to talk about sure. it to the listeners. So I'm currently working in a cafe called The Living Well. Okay. Um, we are a social enterprise, of course, at High Sex Offenders. This idea of... Um, Having an enterprise that hires ex-offenders was conceived about three years ago okay. by the, the founder of this cafe. Okay. So what happened was he was serving his prison sentence. He was in prison as well? Yes, for, for uh, drugs. For or drugs, his okay. very first drug offense. Okay. Uh, he had a background in business. Mm -hmm. So he's asking himself this question, what can I do after my release to help right. those brothers who have been in prison who find... Uh, who after their release has found it so difficult to get a job. Yeah. So with his business background, he sort of um, came up with this idea of starting out a cafe. Okay. And so after his release, he put his idea into, you know, into works, uh -huh. um, rounded up a few investors, okay. and bam, there we have it. So you have a cafe um, that hires um, ex-offenders, ex yes. okay, and uh, do they go through a screening process? I mean, do you interview them or how, how does it work? Just like any other business, of course, when they do come to seek employment, I would interview them. Right, okay. right. But what, what I do not ask is how many times have you been in prison, prison yeah, and what yeah. your sentence is about. Yeah. Because, hey, I, I have been there before. Right. In the year 2002, after I came out, after serving a six-year sentence, mm -hmm. I thought to myself, yeah, Bruce, you're 33 already, you know, you have absolute zero savings. Yeah. Okay, why not start a new life? Yeah. So I went out looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. For three months, three months, I went for countless of interviews. Right. And you know, in every interview form, there is a question, have you ever been... Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought to myself, yeah, since I um, I want to start over again, yeah, I just put yes, you know, because it would hmm. it would be a bit embarrassing if they find out probably yeah, a few yeah, months. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I did. And guess what? All of them, job. all of them said almost the same thing. Hmm. Oh, thank you very much. Please don't call us. We might call you. Hmm. But they never did. Yeah. So that was like a stigma. Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah. 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 You know, a few years ago, uh, the Yellow Ribbon Movement in yeah. Singapore, yeah. they did a, a, a survey. Mm -hmm. 
and they asked businesses around Singapore, will you hire ex-offenders? 33% of businesses said they would. They would. They would. Wow. You yeah. know, what a big percentage, right? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Hmm. In reality, only 4% did. So, <clears throat> I think people are not that forgiving. Mm -hmm. And um, whatever you may say, I think it's, it's the past which... Mm -hmm at some point catches up, mm. right? But, so, yeah. but this is coming from an ex-offender who mm -hmm. has been in prison many times. Yeah. I do not blame them. Because like I've said earlier, I mean, I have to look at my own track record. Yeah. You know, if I put myself in their shoes, yeah. if I'm a business owner, yeah. I want to hire, let's say, for example, a cashier. Yeah. Okay. Two come for interview, one with a prison record, one without. I'm a hire. Obviously, the one Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I do not blame them. I just move on. I just keep on moving on. Like I said, along the way, there will be someone who's willing to hire you or take the risk, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. this really is a new beginning for you, yes. right? So our cafe, <clears throat> what, what we want to do is this. We want to create an environment where there's no judgment. Okay. All right? Yeah. Uh, we want to create a place where ex-offenders can come to voice up their opinions. Mm -hmm. um, we will be... We, as their colleagues, will be empathetic towards their ply okay. in reintegrating back to society. Yeah. Also, much more, we want to create an environment of distraction away from their previous lifestyle, yeah. away from their drugs and their crime. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's that what it doesn't... So, you know, the more they distance themselves, the less chances of yes, them getting exactly. back into it again. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So how many um, ex-offenders do you have at the moment? At the moment, we have, including myself, yeah. that would be three. Okay. But in total, uh, we have had eight before coming okay. through our cafes. Okay. Yeah. And um, any any stories there that, you know, you, you feel um, that, yes, I, in my way, have made a difference to this particular, you know, ex-offender and I've totally reformed him? Has there ever been? Um, we, we, this cafe was only started last year in April. Okay. okay. And yeah. I, one thing I have to tell you, when you, when you want to go on this path to help out ex-offenders, yeah. there will be a lot more misses than hits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But what we have to understand is this. That very little that we... How, how should I put it? That short period of time that um, this ex-offender has come across our doors, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how much I think of an impact I have in his life. Yeah. Okay, it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, what I have to do is to present myself to them. Yeah. Be a living example. Yeah. To let them see that, hey, there is hope. Oh. And yeah. if I can do it, and I, come on, I've been in prison five times. Yeah. yeah. Sentenced 20 years. Yeah. If I can do it, you can do you it can too. Do it. Absolutely. Um, so do you think, I mean, do you have like young and old um, working for you? Mm, yes, I do. You do. Yeah, I do. And so where do you find um, more resistance in terms of, you know, where, like, other is, is it the younger generation that is more um, resistant to, you know, listening to you or... Uh, making a genuine effort uh, to reform themselves or is it the older generation? I guess, I guess for, for both the young and the old, yeah, uh, they, yeah. they both, I would meet resistance with, with any age group, mm -hmm. the young or the old. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I, I do not blame them. Yeah. Why do I say that? Yeah. They've been brought up in a certain kind of environment, so yeah. much so it has been a part of their life. Yeah. Now that all of a sudden they're out of prison, yeah. and I want them to change, yeah. to do a switch. Yeah. Hey, come on, th this doesn't happen it overnight. It doesn't happen overnight, exactly. obviously. So yeah. what I yeah. have to do is give them time to adjust. Mm -hmm. okay. I am there to correct them mm -hmm. when they do something wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So two things can happen. is either they listen or they don't. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if they listen, they can be rest assured that um, they will see improvement in their lives. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if they don't, Okay? Yeah. Um, what will happen is this. They will continue on that trajectory that they are on. Yeah. Okay, which is a, a, a negative trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And when they have hit a plateau, 
Okay, uh, so much so that this job has become too boring for them already. Mm. Mm. Okay, then they don't look for excitement. What they'll do is, they'll, they'll go back to their old ways. And then when they do that, the same old cycle will happen again. Yeah. They start committing crimes, go back to drugs, and then pop going to prison. Mm. And then, you know, uh, they start regretting, um, telling themselves, I want to quit, I want to quit, I want to change my new life, change... Uh, and then when they come out, yeah. Yeah. The, and then they start working again, yeah. thinking that they can blend into mainstream. Yeah. After three months, it's the same, it's the same, same thing. story again. For the simple reason that they do not want to change their attitude. Mm. Right? They yeah. are not... Um, they do not take correction easily. Mm. Because for every ex-offender, what we do have is a rebelliousness in us. Yeah, it, it is, is a tough one. Yeah. But, um, you know, you are, I think, giving a second chance um, mm. to... So, so most of the ex-offenders that come to you are drug addicts or...? Uh, yeah, most of most, them. Mostly yes, drug addicts. Exactly. Yeah. So in Singapore... Currently in prison, more than 65, 65% or 70% of inmates in prison yeah. has either committed a drug offence or has got something to do with drugs. So are you now looking at, because at the moment you have one cafe, mm -hmm. but is the founder of the cafe looking at, you know, spreading out and opening other cafes in, in the city so that, you know, you, uh, obviously then... You're not limited to X number of people. Then you can reach out to a lot more ex-offenders and try, you know, the whole reform process. So is that something which is in the offing? Of course, the dream is to help out as many, many as ex-offenders as I can. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I tell myself in everything, yeah. in everything that I do, yeah. take things one day at a time. Yeah. Because when I start rushing into things, yeah. that is when bad things will happen. It's yeah. happened to me many times already. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I think it gets overwhelming because mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. I think it I, I think the direction that you you're mm -hmm. in is incredible and you know your journey has I know you've spent twenty years of your life unfortunately in prison but in a sense, that's what's made you who you are today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important thing. And the fact that, you know, your wife supported you. And I think you said your mom has yeah. always been there for exactly. you. As you've mentioned, have this beautiful daughter mm -hmm. who's, you know, the love of your life. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's absolutely the right journey that you're on now. Mm -hmm. And you're on the right track. And mm -hmm. I really, really wish you you know all the the happiness and um, I think what you're trying to do is you will succeed um, I'm quite certain of that thank you it's been a pleasure talking to you um, you know I was really looking forward to this interview because I've been talking to so many different people and um, for me as well it's been a journey you know um, so thank you Bruce thank you and um, I look forward to staying in touch. So, mm -hmm. you know, and if there are any updates for me, I'd love to hear it Thank from you. you. Yeah. Sure, and in do. fact, I'd like to come and, um, if possible, you know, just sit in for what one of your sharing? sharings. Sure, yeah, I'd sure, really, really sure. like to do that. Mm, sure. So do, do let me know. I will. Yeah. And you have a very good Christmas. Thank you, you too. Thank you very but much. But before yeah. I sign off, yeah. this is something I absolutely have to do. Please do, okay. yes. The Living Well is located at Lobby A, Tantok Singh Hospital. I was going to do that anyways. Because <laughs> okay. I conclude all yeah, my okay. interviews all right. and I always direct okay. um, people to come to you know, wherever, whomever Great. I've been talking to. Okay, so, so all yours. That's Hit my plug-in, okay, which okay. I will do um, after I finish Great. chatting with you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank Bruce. You. Thank you. Bruce has quite a roller coaster life, which has been extremely fascinating to listen to. After 20 years of being in and out of prison as a drug offender in Singapore, Bruce today is a reformed man. He is so unapologetic about his love affair with drugs. Now he says his daughter is the love of his life and has been the turning point as well in his life. That, for him, is just the way forward. 
He says that he has a calling in his heart to bring hope in prison. His motivational talks are now also being held at schools and other community events. I'm sure he will continue with all the good work and also, you know, the Social Enterprise Cafe, the Living Well Cafe, which is at the Tantok Seng Hospital, will keep him totally abreast. Do support the cause and stop by the cafe when you are in Singapore, enabling him to continue with the good work. This is Pyle signing off until the next conversation on Melting Pot.